Hello, this is John from Swoosh Technologies, and today we're going to take a look at uh, converting a vise uh, received from a manufacturer uh, and how to really utilize it in a cam environment. Uh, so here we have a, a curt vise that's been imported uh, from a step file. This is a, a typical format that you'll see uh, from, from fixture holding companies. You'll get one step file and, and maybe you'll have a, a number of bodies inside of each uh, in, inside of the, the step file uh, once imported. Uh, so what we need to do is make this a true assembly uh, to start with. Uh, so I'm going to go through and, and just work my way, way through making each of these features. Uh, again, here we're in our part navigator. We're going to make each of these features a component uh, and then build an assembly structure. Uh, so to start doing that, I'll start with my vice base. And in the assemblies tab, I can go to create a new component. Uh, there is a issue in uh, NX 2007, which is where I'm working uh, today. Uh, I believe this has been fixed in, in the next major release. Uh, even if I enter in a, a name here uh, for my part, Kurt uh, D688 uh, base, uh, we'll see, I'm going to copy this name because it's actually not going to name my component properly. Uh, but you can see I'm adding the defining objects, that's the actual body, uh, in this case the feature, uh, and it's going to delete that feature from the, the model history here. Uh, so as soon as I say OK, uh, we'll see that our feature uh, is now gone. But if I migrate over to the assembly navigator, we can see that uh, model 1, you can see where it did not inherit my name. Uh, I can go through and just do a quick save as here. and. Let me go ahead and navigate to proper folder. And I'm going to name this uh, Kurt D688 base. And we can say that our, see that our assembly structure is starting to take off. So we got to do this for all the components here. So I'm going to work through this real, real quick. All right, so now I have a true assembly structure here. <clears throat> Save that, and we can start applying some constraints, just as uh, this would be in the real world. Uh, so we can see right now, if I wanted to come in and move a component, uh, nothing is constrained to each other. Uh, yeah, they can certainly move around. Uh, so let me go ahead and apply some constraints.
I'm just going to go ahead and fix the base. Uh, we don't need that moving around at all. Let's see our movable jaw. We can still move here. Assembly constraint. Alright, so now here we can see that uh, our movable master and jaw um, uh, do have some degrees of freedom. Uh, so yeah, we can certainly grab hold of them and, and slide them around uh, as you would in the real vice. Alright, so let's go ahead and save this file. Now the next step will be bringing this into your machining setup. And so to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new uh, little sample part. And in this case, I'll just create a, a block that'll be sufficient for our needs here. Yeah, that's okay size. I'll accept that default. And let's create a manufacturing setup file. So here we have our part uh, and our set in our setup file. We'll see that if we look at the assembly navigator, our test part is loaded as a component. And I'm going to go ahead and change my background. And now we can start by adding our vise in as a component. And here's our vise assembly. Alright, so if we go through, and I'm going to go ahead and just start constraining my vise. Uh, I'll go ahead and select the face, and maybe I'll center this uh, on my uh, coordinate system I have here. If we look in our assembly navigator, we'll go ahead and see, yep, the Kurt Vice is now fully positioned here. And we can move on to our part. So with our part, let me bring this up into our workspace. Again, we have a fixed jaw here. Uh, so the first thing we'll do, kind of like you would in uh, a real world, I don't have any, uh, any kind of kickers or standoffs or parallels or anything like that. Uh, so maybe the first thing I'll do is just apply a, a, a distance measurement here. And we'll say that, yeah, maybe we were going to uh, put this on yeah, a 50 millimeter block. Uh, maybe that's a little bit tall. Let's go to a 30 millimeter. <clears throat> and you might do this in, in the, the real, uh, in your actual setup, have those, those kickers or parallels uh, available for you to, to actually model. Uh, but then we'll go ahead and just constrain the parts to the fixed jaw and maybe we'll say we'll align it uh, of course you might have a stop maybe I'll just line it up with the edge of my part uh, and then now we want to be able to close this this uh, vise uh, so again we can do a, a touch and you see here we're getting a, a little red uh, scenario that's because this uh, geometry is being constrained in the parent component uh, but that's all right let's just uh, we'll leave that for now I'll, I'll say OK. And what we need to do, if we look at our positioning, we'll see that we have some uh, inconsistently constrained objects. Uh, but ultimately, what we want to do on my master, um, I want to override the position. And once I override that position, it's going to honor the constraints uh, in my parent object. 
Uh, so the, the wonderful thing about this, let me go ahead and save my setup file. We can see the orientation of, of our jaw. Uh, but if I go up to the original setup, uh, it, it's unchanged. So we're modifying the positioning in our setup file as opposed to the, uh, the master uh, file, uh, the actual file assembly file here. Uh, so that's how I recommend setting up your uh, vice or work holding type fixtures. Hope this was beneficial. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is John Vincent at Swoosh Technologies.